What's up everyone, my name is Joe and welcome to Film Focused. This video is the first of a four-part DIY series on how to develop and scan your film at home. Now, there are a lot of good resources on the internet, but not all of them are fully comprehensive and give you everything that you need to know in order to get started. So in this video, I'm going to lay out everything you guys need to know and need to have in order to start developing and scanning your film. This is by no means an end-all be-all perfect solution to doing all this on your own, but I've learned a lot over the past couple of years, so learn from my mistakes. I'm going to help relay this information back to you guys so you guys aren't, you know, going into this situation blindly. I'm going to show you what you need to buy, what you should avoid, and how to save some money along the way. For the sake of the video, I'm going to assume that you guys haven't purchased a camera and don't have any film. So you're going to have to make the decision whether or not you want to shoot 35mm or medium format film. And then from there, you have to make the decision on what kind of camera you want to buy. This is a 35mm point and shoot. This is a medium format SLR system. This camera cost me $35 and this was upwards of $2,000. But that doesn't mean that if you want to shoot medium format, you're going to spend a lot of money. You can buy Holgas or other cheap medium format cameras for 20 or 30 bucks online, which is still a really good price. And then you're also getting more image area by shooting medium format. But just getting started out, shooting 35mm tends to be the way to go. You get more images per roll, so you get to work on your technique and see what works and what doesn't work but you're also using less chemicals when you're in the darkroom developing your film. So now you've got your camera, you've got your film, you're gonna need something to actually develop your film in. That's where these Patterson developing tanks come in. This Patterson Universal tank is the one that I was just holding in my hands and is the one that I absolutely recommend that you get when you're just starting out. And that's for a few reasons. The first being you can develop both 35 millimeter and 120 film in this system. That's why it's called the universal tank. These plastic reels adjust to 35 and 120 film. So if you wanted to develop two rolls of 35 millimeter in this tank, you could do that. Or if you wanted to do one roll of medium format film, you could also do that with this tank. There are also larger tanks that you can buy but only get those when you're ready to invest in, in into the process more. If you want to develop more rolls of 35 millimeter or multiple rolls of medium format at the same time, then you're gonna to have to invest into a larger tank system. Now there are metal counterparts to these systems, but they tend to be more expensive. You can see here, this is a heavy duty reel and the reel itself is 45 just for the reel. And it's not adjustable, this is a dedicated medium format reel. So it's definitely better if you're trying to save money to use the plastic Patterson Universal tank um, as opposed to the metal counterpart. Now in terms of longevity, they say that the metal ones last longer, but I've had this same system for over four years and it's worked just fine. And I've invested in a couple more of these systems and they haven't let me down since. Now, depending on whether you're shooting black and white or color, you're gonna need some different chemicals to actually develop your film. If you're on a budget, I'd highly recommend shooting black and white film. It's much easier to develop and it's much less expensive to develop. So this is a Kodak D76 developer and it's only $7 for a one gallon solution. This is a powder that you would mix with distilled water and it makes one gallon of solution that you can then dilute to develop your film. Now. $7 for a full gallon, and then this is a fixer that you will also need, and these are the only two chemicals that you'll need to develop black and white film, and this is only $14. So you can spend just over $20, and you have all the chemicals you need to develop black and white film. This fixer does not need a stop bath, which means you can actually stop the developing process with water, that's it. And then you can put this chemical in and then this fixes the film so that it is no longer sensitive to light and your film is ready to go. Now, I would recommend using this company whenever you're buying your chemicals online. They do a great job of shipping your stuff safe and fast to your door all throughout the United States. There are a lot of really good camera supply stores that do not ship 
their chemicals. They require you to walk into the store and walk out of it with the product. So if you aren't near one of those stores like me and you need to buy stuff online, use Freestyle Photo Supply. So now we've gone over the black and white chemicals that you need. Let's go over color chemicals if that's something that you'd like to do. So this is the Artista C41 liquid color negative developing kit, and this makes one quart of solution. And you can see this is relatively more expensive. It's $30 or just around there for one quart of solution. And these I found can make about 16 rolls of film, which is still a pretty good investment, but absolutely more expensive than their black and white counterpart. Here you can buy a gallon of solution for $70, which is what I tend to do whenever I'm buying my color kit and it's definitely more cost effective. You can develop many more rolls of film this way. You just have to be sure that you take care of the chemicals. And in order to do that, you're gonna need to get good storage bottles. These Delta One containers are by far the industry standard and I would highly recommend using these. I'd also recommend getting whatever size of container that corresponds with the actual chemicals that you're buying. So this is a one gallon container which is what you would want for your D76 and your TF4 if you were developing black and white. Now, once you have one of these for your developer and one of these for your fixer, those are dedicated to those chemicals and only those chemicals. You never wanna switch these bottles. So if you get a new developer, I would recommend, it's not necessary, but I would recommend getting a brand new bottle. They're only $8 or $5 online. Adorama also sells these for really cheap. I think they actually sell them for cheaper than B and H. So if you're looking for a deal on these bottles, I'd go over to Adorama. Um, another thing to remember when you're actually developing color, temperature is very important and the chemicals have to be set at 102 degrees Fahrenheit or somewhere around there. It varies for um, different developing kits. So you're gonna have to invest into some sort of heating element and a tub that can hold those chemicals while you're doing the development. So if we're staying on a budget for the sake of the argument, I would say shoot black and white. You only need two different chemicals and two bottles and you can develop black and white film at home. Regardless if you're using black and white or color chemicals, you always wanna mix with distilled water. It's 98 cents a gallon and it's readily available at all your grocery stores, CVS, Walgreens. They have it everywhere. It's super easy to find. Now don't use tap water or purified water. You can get good results with that, but it tends to leave a spotty residue on the film because there's extra minerals that aren't taken out of the water through the purifying process or through your tap. Now, once you have all your chemicals and your film ready to go, you can develop your film either in your kitchen sink or maybe in your garage if you have a nice laundry sink out there. It's really simple. I did that for the first two years that I was developing film on my own and I ran into no issues whatsoever. Just be careful to make sure that you rinse out any chemicals that may come in contact with your countertop surface or just in the sink in general. They're pretty dangerous to your health if they're consumed, so just be really careful and make sure you take your time cleaning up your workspace once you're finished. Now, once your film is developed and ready to dry, you're gonna hang dry it. The simplest way to do this is if you have any laundry hanger clips. These are really easy to just put over your shower rod um, or hang from maybe like a ceiling fan. I've done that before. Um, but if you don't have these, you can use a wire hanger and some paper clips. These work just fine. Hang this over your shower rod or maybe off of your um, ceiling fan or something that won't allow the film to touch the ground from. Take a paper clip, put it over top. Take your newly developed film and clip it into the paper clip. And then you're gonna wanna add a little bit of weight to the bottom just to make sure that the film dries perfectly flat and doesn't curl up on itself. So just take a second paper clip um, and clip it right onto the bottom there and you're set and ready to go. And you can, you know, you can put up to like five rolls of film on this one hanger. It's a really simple solution. You have these hanging around. So use what you have to your advantage so you're not wasting money on anything extra. You can find these pretty cheap online or at least a different version of them on like Amazon. You can get packs of 12 for like five or eight bucks. So if that's what you wanna use, go ahead and pick some of those up. Now, once your film is developed and dried, you're gonna need a system to safely store and protect your film. 
the best way to do that are these print file film pages. They run you about $6 for a 25 pack if you're shooting 35 millimeter, and that's a great way to get started. It's a very small investment that can hold up to 25 rolls of film safely and securely for you. Now, if you're shooting medium format, there are a couple more options depending on what format you're shooting. So here you can see this is a six by six storage system and you're paying still $6 for a 25 pack. Now, I like to shoot six by seven negatives. So you can see this is a dedicated six by seven sheet holder and this is 100 pieces for just under $20. So it's a marginally more expensive initial cost to get the more, you know, more files. But in the long run, if you're shooting a lot of film, they're definitely a must have. The last thing that's left to do is scan your film. So in this video, I'm going to simply show you what I've used in the past. But in the future videos, I'm going to show you how to actually use them. The first solution and my preferred solution would be to get a light table. This one costs $50, but you can find them ranging from 15 all the way to a couple hundred dollars. This is a uniform LED light, so it's a nice bright surface that you can use um, to scan your film just using a DSLR or even a point and shoot camera. The budget solution would be to use this cardboard box. You'd simply cut a hole in the top and in the side, and all you would need is a light source to illuminate the film from the bottom to photograph it through the top. And you can actually scan your film this way. It won't be the best quality and it won't be the best images you've ever scanned, but it's a way to do it on a budget if you don't wanna spend any money whatsoever. So there you have it. That's everything that you need to get started developing film on your own in your house. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Be on the lookout for the next part of this series where I'll go over how to develop black and white film. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed making this one and I'm looking forward to making more content like this. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for spending some time with me and I'll see you next time.